You are traveling a road that can't be located on any map. You enter in September, exit in January, and a love of pro football is the ticket that transports you to a world both wondrous and weird. And it all begins behind closed doors. Big game, big game, they're all big. Come out there from the get-go, let's get the job done, let's fly around, have fun, cut and shoot, do what we have to, let's get it done. Play loose, play physical, and play smart. No mistakes. It was a long time ago that we opened the season and we finished it by talking about how far we had to go and how big the mountain was. You're right at the summit. One thing I want you to remember, football is only a small part of your life. It ain't, live, it ain't life or death out there. All we got to do is go out and do the same thing we've asked from the first day we started. Do everything as good as you can and then a little bit more. That's all the hell you got to do. Each season of the 1980s began, as always, with high hopes and ended four months later in a whirlwind finish with more teams grabbing for a piece of the playoffs than ever before. Each and every player had a championship dream. For some, the dream was fulfilled. For all, the chase was a wild one, scintillating and stimulating. We can close the coffin on these suckers right now, okay? Get your man! Here we go, man. We got 60 minutes of football. We're gonna be world champions. We gotta start somewhere. It's right here. We gotta come out the cellar. We gotta come out for 60 minutes. Dog fight, ready? Let's go! Attack! 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 Set alert! Set alert! Set alert! Set alert! 11! 11! That's okay! The 1980s a decade that contained a lifetime's worth of evolution as both offenses and defenses changed with the times. Aggressive play was the rule, not the exception. To survive, one needed fast feet, soft hands, and hard heads. Sophisticated passing offenses became the equivalent of space-age technology, manned by graceful sky pilots with their sights set on a Super Bowl. To attain it, one time, one time. all they had to do was blast off. In the 1980s, players were bigger, stronger, faster, and quicker than ever before, and presented us with some superhuman efforts that will be forever frozen in the memory. In the middle of the Craig, and he breaks loose and runs loose. He gets used to the 30, to the 25. He's down to the 20. Breaks loose again. He's to the 10. Five. Touchdown, 49ers. Well, what a bonanza. Spectacular run by Roger Craig. Randall faking, now rolling with the football and being slapped at the 10, but throwing the ball and goes for a touchdown. High five, reach in the end zone, touchdown. I saw it and I don't even believe it. Marino back to throw, he sets. Indeed, spectacular performances defined a decade in which every player sought a place in the sun. Has the new record. That's 18 touchdown receptions in a season. He is the all. The 1980s was an era of excellence. 
punctuated by the many records that were broken. Single season rushing record for the outstanding star. Some that may well stand forever. Art Monk has just broken the National Football League record for receptions in a single season. The That's crowd the is on its feet. They should be. What a great record to break and a well-deserved honor for Art Monk. As Largent goes in motion toward the right, great back to pass, blitz coming, great throw short, he's got a reception by Largent, who makes the catch and now becomes the all-time career receiving leader in the National Football League. Quick pitch to Walter, looking for the record, cuts back, he's got it, he's out of it at 25 and a 26 yard line, Walter Payton becomes the National Football League all time, leading rusher, surpassing Jim Brown, and that's the equivalent to Hank Aaron breaking Babe Ruth's all time home run record, and listen to the standing ovation. Football has evolved from back lots to big cities to temperature controlled palaces in the suburbs. But the shape of the football has remained the same, making the game as unpredictable and entertaining as it was 60 years ago. Craig fumbles the stack, there's a scramble for it, nearly fielded by the Rams. Craig gets it back of the 20, throws oh, it in the end zone, touchdown, and he hooks the green. I don't believe it. Now they're going to play it safe, but he dropped the football, and Brett Clark's going to bring him down at the 15. Here's a lateral as Roby got it to Jensen. Jensen now trying to load up and throw. Wide open over here on the near side. Miami's got a receiver at midfield. To the 45, 40. He might go all the way. And now a loose football again. What a crazy play. It's loose in the end zone, and the Falcons are on top of it. I've never seen anything like this. Maybe the craziest play in the history of the Orange Bowl. We just saw it. Every team had the power to create a miracle. And it became a source of high-octane energy for teams accustomed to running on empty. Looks down the field. He's looking for some help. Throws it over the middle. And he's caught. He might be a touchdown. The immaculate reception. One team in the early 80s made a habit of fantastic finishes. And the cardiac kids are at work today. Sipe throwing to Logan. He got it on the 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Dave Logan! 46 yards, I don't believe it! Touchdown, Brown, 16 seconds remaining, what a play! 14 times in two seasons, the Cleveland Browns came from behind to win with less than two minutes remaining. Then there were those acts of desperation. Or were they miracles by design? They've got to go to the end zone with two seconds left. Are we talking Hail Mary or are we talking a reception and lateral? I would say right here you've got to go to Billy White's shoes and let him do a little dance with the ball and try to go for the end zone. Here come the Falcons with Hodge, Bailey, and Johnson. All to the left side. Two seconds remain. 49ers will come with a three-man rush. Barkowski to throw. He is going long sideline. It's going to be a jump ball and it is pulled out by Billy Johnson. Johnson inside the 10. Boy, he is out. He is. Give it to him. He's a touchdown. Touchdown. Billy Johnson. It's a touchdown. No time on the clock. The Falcons have won it. They pulled it from nowhere. Big Ben left and it worked. Full moon over Atlanta. Full County Stadium of shows did his thing. How about in 1980, a Hail Mary pass dug the Minnesota Vikings out of a hole and put them in the playoffs. They had trimmed the lead from 14 points to one with time for one last play. Cleveland 46. Three wide receivers right, Kramer back to pass. He's going deep down the right side, and it is spot four and it's touchdown! Go to the 
the playoff. 28. Hail Marys rely on skill and a whole lot of luck. But the true test of a team is their ability to string together a series of plays in a do-or-die situation. And the Broncos are 98 yards away from where they need to go. Still five minutes to go, but they need something out of this drive. With 98 and a half yards left on the Broncos' road to the Super Bowl, Come on, Johnny! quarterback John Elway took charge of what became known simply as the drive. Pass for Sewell. Got it! Keeps it at the 48-yard line. And Denver loses eight. We'll have third down and 18. Come on, stick it to him, baby. Stick it to him. Fifteen plays in five minutes. Come on, John, you can do it. The you most do it. exciting five minutes of the 86 season. Touchdown! The drive's momentum swept the Broncos into overtime, on to victory, and earned them a special place on the landscape of the 1980s. The biggest story of the decade involved the Bears' William Perry. In 1985, the refrigerator became a folk hero as the only 300-pound lineman to ever run for a touchdown and catch a touchdown pass in one season. The fridge marched to the beat of a different Walkman, as did the Seahawks' Brian Bosworth, who provoked strong reactions once he made pro football his chosen profession. The Raiders' Bo Jackson likewise created a stir by making the game his hobby. Jackson getting an Allen block, cuts under it, bangs through Bosworth! In 1987, Bo showed the Boz who was boss. Bosworth and just blasted While Bo Jackson tripped the light fantastic in Los Angeles, a rookie runner in Cincinnati created the biggest dance craze of the decade, the Icky Shuffle. But at 230 pounds, Icky Woods was not the game's biggest hot dog. That distinction belonged to the Jets' Mark Gastineau. While Gastineau left the game for a goddess of the silver screen, the Cowboys featured a solid gold dancer, who in 1984 turned in the longest touchdown run in NFL history. The handoff door set up the middle. Here he goes. Cuts to his right. Going all the way. Go! A record-setting tempo was established in 1982 as well by the Redskins, Mark Mosley. 42-yard attempt. Plenty long enough. It's good! Mark Mosley has broken the National Football League record. 23 straight field goals broke a record that stood for four years. And in 1985, a 40-year-old record was toppled when the Chiefs' Stephon Page totaled 309 receiving yards against San Diego. The standard had stood for so long that Page didn't realize it was within his grasp. No. Hey, no. One more catch should do it. Come on, boy. Got it. Back to pass. Kenny throws it is. Side. Caught by Page. He's got the record. Stephon Page at the gain of 11 has just set an all-time NFL single-game receiving record. But I'm not one of the greatest. I'm just a free agent. No. Dan Marino is one of the greatest. The most dazzling passer of the decade was not a free agent, but he was only the sixth quarterback chosen in the 83 draft. In only his second season, Marino completed more passes for more yards and more touchdowns than any quarterback in history. He is firmly on course to become the greatest passer in league history and to join John Unitas and Sammy Baugh as mythic figures of the game.
Much like Dan Marino, Eric Dickerson plays as if he were from another planet. While Marino gave Miami a deep passing game, Dickerson gave the Los Angeles Rams a rushing attack. In 1983, his 1,808 yards rushing led the NFL. It was the highest total by a rookie runner in league history. The next season, Dickerson outdid himself by establishing the single-season rushing record with 2,105 yards. But where Eric Dickerson is going, Walter Payton has already been. Since this country transformed rugby into football more than 100 years ago, no man has carried the ball as often or as far as Walter Payton. The only thing greater than his talent was his heart. As Payton puts it, there's a voice inside me saying, "You can always do better." To know the power of that voice is to see Walter Payton battle through a broken field. Peyton's career spanned 12 years, and along the way, he kept an appointment with destiny. When he became the NFL's all-time leading rusher, a remarkable record, equaled only by the spirit in which it was achieved. The motivating drive for me has been for the athletes that have tried, but yet and still have failed to reach that certain achievement, and also the athletes that、uh, that didn't get an opportunity to. Like the Overstreets and the Delaneys and the Brian Piccolos, you know, this simplifies what the game is made of. And what I did out there today is a reflection of those guys, because they made the sacrifices as well. And it's a tribute to me to bestow this honor upon them. Thank you. In an era of excellence, Walter Payton's contributions to the game were unparalleled. The likes of which may never be seen again. Some games are remembered more for the weather conditions than for the final score. On a Monday night in '84, a blizzard engulfed Mile High Stadium in Denver, and as the snow continued to fall, the television ratings rose, making the game one of the most watched of the decade. It was man against the elements, and how they conquered them. In 1982, the Patriots had a most unusual solution to a snowy problem. In the closing minutes of a scoreless tie, rookie head coach Ron Meyer called for a masked man. A snowplow driver, Mark Henderson, responded. A convicted burglar, employed at Foxborough Stadium on a weekend work release program, Henderson cleared the path for the decisive field goal that propelled the Patriots into the playoffs. In the 1980s, there was snow, sleet, rain, and heat. But nothing could match the cold front that moved through Ohio in 1982. A wind chill factor of 59 degrees below zero made it the coldest day in Cincinnati history, and turned the AFC Championship game between the Bengals and the Chargers into a test of wills. Quarterback Ken Anderson defied the elements. And the men in the Halloween helmets earn their stripes as AFC champions. Seven years later, the fog rolled in. There were times in 1989 when the Philadelphia Eagles seemed to be playing in a fog. In a playoff game against the Bears, that metaphor became a reality. When a dense fog descended on Soldier Field in Chicago, the Eagles' hopes of erasing the Bears' halftime lead vanished in a puff of smoke, and their Super Bowl dreams receded into a hazy infinity. 
Weather was not a factor in Miami on January 2, 1982. A steamy, sultry Orange Bowl provided the backdrop for a first-round playoff game between the San Diego Chargers and the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins were slight favorites to win, but the visiting Chargers shocked everyone with a barrage of first-quarter points. Wes Chandler's punt return ignited an outburst of 24 unanswered points as San Diego looked to turn the game into an early rout. Way to go, James! Way to go, James! Way to bust it there! Way to go! Way to go, man! Way to go! While the Chargers were held in check for the rest of the half, the Dolphins were plotting to unleash a schoolyard play that caught the San Diego defense totally unprepared. He's firing for Harris. Chargers roared back on the play of number 80 tight end Kellen Winslow. In a game with many heroes, Winslow earned special notice, setting playoff records for receptions and yardage, while overcoming a pinched nerve, a bruised shoulder, and heat exhaustion. The drama continued to unfold as both teams seized and lost the lead. But with only minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, the Dolphins finally took control and appeared to have victory within their grasp. The Chargers have to force the turnover. Trot, hands off to the first man, the ball's on the ground! The Chargers have recovered! San Diego has Trailing 38-31, to 31, the Chargers mounted a desperation drive that ended with a touchdown pass from Dan Fouts to James Brooks. In overtime, the Chargers finally had their opportunity to win. Snap, it's down, he hits it, it's up! It's so good! Kicker Rolf Bernerska had never missed a game-winning field goal in his career, but then Kellen Winslow added to his heroics minutes later when he blocked a second Dolphin field goal attempt and with it, he broke Miami's fighting spirit. Behind perfect protection, Dan Fouts picked Miami apart, setting the stage for Bernerska's game-winning kick. The Chargers were given a second chance, and this time, they did not fail. The Chargers were not a team of destiny, but for one game, the best of the 1980s, they were worthy of the weighty cloak of greatness. Intimidation and the big play helped the Raiders win two Super Bowls in the 1980s. Lawrence Taylor was the decade's most dominating defender and his Giants won Super Bowl XXI. Quarterback Doug Williams led the Redskins to one of two Super Bowl victories. And Chicago's legendary Monsters of the Midway awoke from a 20-year sleep to win their first Super Bowl. Great teams all. But no one team showed more consistency throughout the 1980s than the San Francisco 49ers. Quarterback Joe Montana was the catalyst. But the architect of this powerhouse was Bill Walsh. A scholarly head coach with an advanced degree in sideline communications. He was a master of the game and gave the young 49ers stability and composure. Either fan or corner, okay. and as soon as you see the angle he's breaking... Walsh led his upstarts from obscurity into the 1981 NFC Championship game against America's one-time team, the Dallas Cowboys. Everything hangs in the balance now. The season, the outcome of the Super Bowl berth, hangs in the balance. He has the ball. Montana rolling out the right, looking toward the end zone, throwing under pressure, throws his pass. Caught by Clark! Clark got a touchdown! It will forever be known as the catch. And the 49ers went on to win their first of three Super Bowls of the 80s. They were a hard-nosed team that seemed out of place in San Francisco, the most seductive of cities. From the Golden Gate Bridge to the cable cars, the town's alluring rhythms are as sensuous as a samba. 
but the football team is vintage rock and roll. The 49ers boasted a unique team chemistry that produced a volatile game plan. Jerry Rice, the most feared receiver in pro football, was the centerpiece of a high-flying aerial attack complemented by a highly productive running game featuring Roger Craig. All decade long, the 49ers mined a vein of spectacular plays that earned them the mother load of glory that culminated in the final championship game of the decade, Super Bowl XXIII. Behind in the fourth quarter, hopes were fading. The 49ers have a long way to go. But in the harsh glare of football's ultimate spotlight, the 49ers proved they were equal to the pressure of the event. Throws over the middle, completes it to Craig. Craig Since its inception, the Super Bowl had been searching for this scenario. Pro football's best quarterback taking pro football's best team the length of the field for the winning touchdown in the final minutes. In Super Bowl 23, Joe Montana and the team of the decade finally delivered. the clock run. They haven't called timeout. Montana going without a huddle. Joe back to throw. He looks. He throws. He completes it to Craig. He's down to the 10. The 49ers will have to take a timeout here, and they do. It's such a sight to watch this. It is, uh, whether it happens now or not, to watch Joe Montana do this yep. uh, so many years and to watch this uh, absolute surgeon on the football field and one of the all-time greats do his thing again, it's almost like poetry. At the 10-yard line, 39 seconds remaining. Montana, at quarterback, in motion, comes right. Back to throw, Montana. Steps up, throws. The 49ers' fabulous drive provided a fitting climax to the 1980s, a dynamic decade, an era of excellence. I love you. I love you. Congratulations. I'm, I'm happy for you like I've never been. Believe me. Congratulations. This is yours. You deserve it. Oh, man. That was a good game, huh? Great game. <laughs> Thank you. 